Hello everybody, June is either rapidly approaching or it's already underway and once again I've been informed by reliable sources that more new video games are in fact coming out in this fabled month of dads and grads and summertime fun. So let me regale you with some tales of the biggest game releases of June 2024. They're not really tales, they're just like release dates and platforms and stuff like that. Before we get into it, a friendly reminder that we try to be as comprehensive and informative as possible, but release dates are subject to change and games get delayed and surprise announced all the time and sometimes flat out canceled. So if something is notably missing here or it's here and it shouldn't be, I assure you, we apologize sincerely. We do our best. We'll try better next time. Last month, we missed the retro horror Crow Country, which landed on the PlayStations, Xboxes and PC on the 9th, as well as read only memories Neurodiver, the sequel to the cyberpunk adventure 2064, which hit everything on the 15th. There was also the atmospheric puzzle game Lorelei and the Laser Eyes, which hit Switch and PC on the 16th, and Neptunia's Sisters vs. Sisters, which hit the Xboxes on the 21st. There was, of course, the turn-based superhero game Capes, which hit PS5, Xbox Series, PC, and Switch on the 29th, and I think there were a couple more. Anyway, we're here to talk about June, so let's get on with it. On June 3rd, Elder Scrolls Online players on PC can hit the bricks in the latest expansion, The Gold Road, which will be hitting Xbox and PlayStation platforms a couple weeks later on the 18th. On June 4th, a bunch of stuff drops all at once. There's Star Wars Hunters on Switch and Mobile, which is the free-to-play multiplayer arena combat game set in that ubiquitous galaxy far, far away, and its colorful and offbeat roster of playable characters kind of gives me Star Wars Demolition vibes. Remember Star Wars Demolition? It was kind of like Twisted Metal, but with a Rancor. Everything you can play Destiny 2 on can also play Destiny 2 The Final Shape. That certainly sounds like it might be the last expansion period, but that remains to be seen. What I do understand is that it's wrapping up the Light and Darkness saga, which began with Destiny 1 almost 10 years ago. Considering that Destiny 2 released almost 7 years ago, seems like we're long overdue for Destiny 3, but it's also very possible that Bungie just has more expansions planned for Destiny 2. We'll have to wait and see. Another game where you and your friends run around as characters with brightly colored clothes and hair zapping people with space weaponry is the asymmetrical multiplayer horror game Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Thankfully, you don't need to collect any Arcana lore cards or watch hour-long YouTube explainers to make sense of the story here. You can just watch the cult classic 1988 film of the same name, though really that doesn't fully explain why there are clowns from space killing people, but hey, just go with it. What are you gonna do? Knock my block off. <laughs> Also on the 4th on Switch and PC is Fireside, which looks like a cozy 2D narrative adventure about making friends and telling stories around the old campfire. Meanwhile on PC, there's Songs of Silence, which is a fantasy strategy game that is story rich and roguelite. I think that was supposed to come out last month, but here it is in June. On June 5th, the prehistoric strategy game The Ancients leaves early access on Steam, and on the 6th, Apple Arcade gets Return to Monkey Island and Rabid's Legends of the Multiverse. And if you have an iOS device with an M1 chip or newer, you can play Assassin's Creed Mirage on it. And when you're done, you can flip over your Apple device and use it to cook grilled cheese sandwiches, because that thing is probably heating up. Also on the 6th, the Smurfs Village Party, which is basically Mario Party, but with Smurfs. How many Smurfs? I don't know, like a hundred of them. Is that enough Smurfs for you? That's what it says on the website. I hope you're happy. That's a lot of Smurfs. I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> it also says on the website that's coming to all the consoles and PC. On the 7th, Dragon is Dead leaves early access, and that's a roguelite hack and slash action platformer, though you probably pieced that together in less time than it took me to say all those words. Wow, slow down, egghead. Speaking of words, here's a whole bunch more of them. Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous, A Dance of Masks. That is the name of the expansion for the 2021 isometric RPG that is coming out on June 13th. On June 14th, it's story time. Monster Hunter story time, that is, because Monster Hunter Stories is coming to Switch, PS4, and PC, and Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin is coming to PS4. Also that day on everything is Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance, which is the complete and expanded spin on the Atlas JRPG that hit Switch back in 2021, and now it's on Switch and everything else. On the 18th, Still Wakes the Deep hits PC and new gen, and this is the latest first-person survival horror from the team behind Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs, and everybody's going to the rapture. And the pitch here is basically John Carpenter's The Thing, except it's set in 1975 on an abandoned oil rig off the coast of Scotland, and that sounds terrifying. <laughs> A couple of games leave early access on Steam on the 18th as well. There's Hashtag Blood, an animated dungeon crawler that looks like a 90s cartoon, and Soul Mask, a sandbox survival game involving ritual sacrifices and enchanted face coverings. Okay. 
Also on the 18th on PC is Thalassa, Edge of the Abyss, a first-person psychological drama narrative adventure set under the sea, which sounds somewhere between Gone Home and Bioshock, but I could be way off. On the 20th, Aska hits PC as well, and that's a Viking survival game where you and up to three friends scrounge for resources to build a village while fending off mythical creatures of the Norse variety, so a little bit like Valheim, I guess. On the 21st, you can tie a yellow ribbon round the FromSoft version of Yggdrasil in Elden Ring's first and allegedly only expansion, Shadow of the Erd Tree. This will take place in a whole new area, and in order to reach it, you'll need to have beaten Star Scourge Radon and Moog Lord of Blood, so keep that in mind if you're starting up a new file. You'll also probably want to be at least level 100 to jump into the DLC. If you're a little rusty and want to get back into fighting shape before this drops, IGN put together a nice little refresher. Here's a handy QR code that'll take you right to it. We'll also put a link in the description below. On the 25th, Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble comes to Switch, along with Luigi's Mansion 2 HD a couple days later on the 27th. I'm not going to link you to any tips and tricks for those games. I think you can probably figure out the bananas and the ghosts on your own. Also on Switch on the 27th are Chia, the charming open world indie game set in New Caledonia, which lets you possess various animals and objects in your surroundings that run around causing some mischief. It's a good time. And also Radiant Tail Fanfare. This is an Otome dating game wherein you play as a young woman named Tefalia who attempts to manage, but also romance, a gaggle of beautiful male circus performers, including a somber clown, a hesitant magician, an acrobat who can't entertain, and a reluctant ringleader. I say a lot of silly nonsense in these videos, both on purpose and otherwise, sometimes both, like last month when I jokingly said MotoGP24 was about a cyborg general practitioner, but then I also absentmindedly implied that it was a motocross game when it very clearly is a racing game, but I'm being 100% sincere and fact actually correct as far as I can tell when I say this game is about trying to make out with hot anime boy carnies and that's great I'm not knocking it but when the official description on Nintendo's website contains the phrase will she find her happy ending beyond the big top I cannot not make fun of that if you can't laugh at clowns what the f can you laugh at <laughs> on June 28th Gigantosaurus Dino Sports comes to everything and that's the latest video game based on the animated series for preschoolers which is about dinosaurs and in this game they play various sports that's probably pretty obvious. Also that day on Switch, plus the PlayStations, is the much less obvious Spy Anya Operation Memories, which is the first video game based on the animated preschooler from the hit series Spy Family, which is about a family of spies, but rather than doing spy stuff, in this game the daughter has a school assignment to assemble a photo diary of slice of life moments, which is a pretty ingenious use of this intellectual property. And with that, this video diary of June's biggest game releases must come to an end. Friendly reminder that we are entering summer event season, so it's entirely likely that by the time you watch this video, some new release dates have been revealed, and you never know. We might have gotten some of those surprise available now announcements, but as of May 21st, 2024, at around 2.13 p.m. Pacific time, this is what June looks like from where we're sitting. What are you playing this summer? Erdtree? Probably Erdtree. It's gotta be Erdtree, huh? Yes! Hell yeah! Hey, come on, baby! Ah! Okay, if you're not playing Erdtree, what are you playing? Let me know, and as always, if there's something we missed, shout it out in the comments, but please, be nice about it. We're people, too. I will see you in July, or maybe sooner, if you watch the other videos I'm in, or if you see me at the grocery store. If you see me at the grocery store, say hello, unless I'm in the embarrassing section, in which case, wait until I go to a less embarrassing section, then say hello. See you later.